When people ask me why I joined the society, I always give them the same answers. To get my hands on sick weapons, because the work was fun, and because I like busting my butt and actually getting rewarded for it. Sure, the society talked a good game about spreading freedom and protecting the Sky Realm's peace, but it wasn't like I ever set out to be a hero. But hunting primal beasts with badass seal weapons? <laughs> Sign me the hell up. Too bad there weren't enough weapons to go around. Only the best of the best become weapon contractors. Of course, I knew from the start I was contractor material. It wasn't long before I was making a pact with the Spear of Arves. What a hot little number. Now, did I feel bad for those who didn't make the cut? Yeah, a little. But I earned my position. And no one was going to take that away from me. It wasn't about becoming rich or famous. It was about proving my worth. I don't like being undersold or underrated, you know? Best part was, as a weapon contractor, I had dibs on the deadliest missions. And those were perfect for showing everyone what I was made of. And damn, did the society have its fair share of enemies. The worst of which was an evil coalition we simply called the Foe, who only seemed to care about sowing chaos. As soon as I became a contractor, I was thrown into battle with the Foe. Talk about out of the frying pan and into the fire. My orders were explicit. Eliminate on sight. There were some days when the bloodshed took its toll on me. But then I'd remind myself that these villains were out to wreck the skies. When I wasn't putting bad guys into the ground, I hunted primal beasts to gather their battle data. See, seal weapons aren't just good at taking down primals. They absorb their powers, too. That's what makes our vest so special. The more primals it crushes, the stronger it gets. Imagine how unstoppable I'll be once I supercharge this bad boy. So, to recap, my average work week looks like this. Slay foes and primals, get paid, then splurge all that cash on my days off. Look, if you're gonna work hard, you might as well play hard, right? Before I joined the society, I used to lead a group of knights. It was all fun and games, until the local lord tried to adopt me as his daughter. I never cared for social status, and I sure as hell didn't want to be tied down by expectations. My life, my reigns. So I said so long to my compatriots. It was nice knowing ya. But if playing by my own rules was so important to me, then why'd I throw in with the captain's crew? Well, I didn't do it just for funsies. My master plan was to have the crew members join the society too, which would have bought me a ton of brownie points with the higher ups. But journeying with the crew changed me. I met people from all walks of life, and I grew as a person. I started thinking I'd be better off following the crew instead of the society. I'm a natural-born fighter. Maybe I could put myself to better use elsewhere. Because honestly, becoming a contractor wasn't my main reason for seeking out the society. In the end, I just figured they were the organization that offered me the most freedom. So if it wasn't clear by now, I like doing things my way. Which brings me to a constant thorn in my side. Vasaraga, the annoying half of my two-man cell. Considering it was Drill Sergeant Ilsa who assigned us together, I figured she knew what she was doing. Yeah, no. Vasaraga and I gelled like oil and water. Did Ilsa really expect us to have good team chemistry? I think sticking him with me was an attempt to keep him from going off the deep end. Only later did I find out he'd been through some pretty traumatic events in his life. It scarred him, both physically and emotionally. Maybe that's why he can be borderline suicidal whenever someone else's life is at stake. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for helping people. I'm just saying it's 100% possible to play hero without throwing your life away. 
I remember this one time when we got trapped in a life or death situation because of his screw up. You should have heard the rage I was spewing. Know what he did next? He apologized, which just felt out of character coming from him. Like, even though it was your fault we're in this mess, don't just throw in the towel, man. Ugh, it was so frustrating. Who knew that big lug could be so sensitive? On the flip side, I can't help but be honest. I like what I like, and I hate what I hate. I don't want anyone getting the wrong impressions about me. I might say things that ruffle a few feathers, but I stand by my words. I can't take back what I've already said. Anyway, I'd rather be true to myself than be something I'm not. That's just the kind of gal I am. It was good to be back in Seed Hollow after wrapping up another easy-peasy mission. Since my schedule was empty, I decided to hit up a cute little cafe for some much-deserved cake. Um... Hello there! Some little kid I've never seen before walked right up to me, his eyes twinkling with starstruck awe. He got down on one knee and said, Will you marry me? Was this kid for real? Did he even know what he was asking? <laughs> You've got guts, little man. Tell you what, come find me in a decade or so and then maybe we'll talk. I thought a gentle rejection would get him off my back, but I was wrong. If you walk away now, you'll be making the biggest mistake of your life! I knew better than to take the bait, but I had to admit, I was sort of curious. Okay, Hotshot, I'll bite. Why are you asking a total stranger like me to marry you? At least he had a good eye. Credit where credit's due. Because... I know you're strong. You make stomping monsters look so easy. Oh, and you're really pretty, too. Wow, what do you know? A sweet talker. And your spear is wicked cool. How many monsters can you shish kebab with that thing? <laughs> I should have known. Boys love the heroic stuff. Ten? Twenty? It doesn't matter. The real prize is in hunting primal beasts. Oh, wait, you guys don't call them that. I meant primeval gods. I've got a soft spot for children, especially the ones who hang on my every word. You try ignoring the adorable little scamps. In any case, it seemed clear that this boy was genuinely head over heels for me. So, how about it? Will you marry me? Nope. advice don't spring a marriage proposal on an unsuspecting woman catch you later little man maybe we'll chat some other time I ruffled his hair and started walking off I'm not giving up the tyke knew how to dream big if only a certain grumpy lug I knew had the same level of optimism Hi, Azeda. Fancy running into you here. You're just as pretty as the first time we met. I had started to wonder if I'd ever see the little heartbreaker again. Guess I got my answer. We talked for a bit, and I learned his name was Vaughn. I knew which question he wanted to pop, but I didn't have time to humor him today. A hospital in Seed Hollow was in dire need of medicinal ingredients, so it was off to Fondham for me and the crew. Okay, gotcha. I understand. Well, that was easy. Considering how he kept pestering me, I didn't expect him to be so reasonable. I know better than to get in the way of your job. I am a little worried, but... I'm sure the monsters won't give you any trouble. You got that right. I eat monsters for breakfast. Aw, how sweet. The little doodlebug had total faith in me. Stay safe out there! Come back in one piece! I will, I will. As I left to meet up with the crew, I made a mental note to pick up a souvenir for my biggest little fan.
the sweet. I think that's everything on the list. Good, because this heat's killing me. Let's get back to the ship. Golem? I like the way it glitters. I'll make a neat souvenir for a certain someone I know. Phew. Easy peasy. Welcome back, Zeta! Vaughn was the first person to greet me when I returned to Seed Hollow. He ran over to me like an overexcited puppy. Here, I got you a little something for being good. Whoa, this rock is crazy! It's all shiny and stuff! I'm a pro at picking out gifts, if I do say so myself. After all, what kid isn't mesmerized by shiny objects? Vaughn wouldn't stop thanking me. I honestly didn't think he'd like it that much. But in this case, I was happy to be wrong. It's amazing how you made it out of Fondom without a scratch. You're a one-woman wrecking crew. Hmm. <laughs> Can't argue with the truth. Anyway, it's cool that you're being nice to me, but I don't mind when you play hard to get either. Huh? The nerve of this kid. Are you blushing? <laughs> what? His confidence was respectable. Admirable, even. But seriously, get real, little man. Ugh, talking to you makes my head spin. Does that mean you're falling for me? No, it means I'm worried about your future. Years from now, Vaughn's gonna be breaking hearts left and right. Mark my words. Hey there, Zeta! 
So glad I caught you again. How did he always know when I was in Seed Hollow? He was clueless to his clinginess. And it was testing my patience. Are you free today? I was thinking we could go on a picnic. I mulled it over for a bit. A picnic didn't sound half bad. It was a nice day, after all. Oh no. Is this a bad time? His puppy dog eyes bore into my soul. How could I say no to that? Kids just have this way of triggering your protective instincts. Not to mention they can be terrifyingly perceptive. You know what? The weather's great today. So count me in. His face lit up with joy. And I turned to my next important decision. What to have for lunch. I didn't have to think too hard about that. When it came to picnics, sandwiches were the only way to go. This must be the lad I've heard so much about. A few days earlier, I was in the ship's lounge telling the captain about Vaughn when Vasaraga happened to walk in. So he ended up learning about the kid, too. He listened without saying much. Never was the talkative type, anyway. Hi, mister. I'm Vaughn. I half expected Vaughn to cower from Vasaraga, but instead the boy dropped a friendly hello. Maybe he had a strict upbringing. Call me Vasaraga. Vasaraga looked at me, then at Vaughn, then back at me again. What did he want? So that's how it is. Here, Zeta. Take these. I peeked into the bag he gave me and did a double take. It was stuffed with fruit sandwiches. These come highly recommended by Vern, Lyria, and the Captain. You should split them with Vaughn. For the both of us, huh? Call me crazy, but it almost sounded like he went out of his way to buy these for us. I rummaged through the goods and caught sight of one sandwich stuffed with melon slices and another with peaches. Nice. Those are my favorites. Hey, great pickups, Basaraga. Can't wait to scarf these down. Go for it. Cha-ching! Jackpot! Vaughn and I said our goodbyes to Vasaraga, and we found an open bench in a park just outside the city. You look really happy. Are you a big fruit fan? I was jamming an ungodly amalgamation of fruit, bread, and whipped cream into my face. I think that counts as a yes. Yeah, more or less. I like anything as long as it's tasty. Ah, that's good to know. There was no chance in hell Vasaraga picked out these cute sandwiches all by himself. Absolutely none. Someone in the crew must have tagged along. The thought of him stomping through the aisles of a shop filled with cupcakes and cookies drew a chuckle out of me. So, um, are you and Vasaraga an item? Are we an item? Gross! Is that what it looks like to you? Look, he's just my co-worker. I'm kind of stuck with him. Uh-huh. He opened his mouth as if he had more to say. But I guess he changed his mind. We ended up having a fascinating chat about bugs instead. It's always nice to see you. It was another gorgeous day. Vaughn came bounding over to see me for like, what, the hundredth time? Or maybe even millionth? I wanted to give you something to say thanks for the souvenir you got me. I hope you like it. He held out a beautifully wrapped box, its sides emblazoned with the logo of a world-class bakery. <sighs> I didn't know what to say. Kids ought to be spending their lunch money on cheap snacks, not fancy pants pastries. Are you sure you want me to have this? How could you even afford this with pocket change? Don't you know it's discourteous to appraise the worth of one's gift? Uh, how do you know big words like that? Papa told me. Oh, great. Don't tell me he got his family involved. 
I wanted to show you how much I care, so I saved up my allowance. Zero Carte helped me pick a shop that's popular with girls. Vaughn stared at the ground as he spoke, stealing an occasional glance at me to gauge my reaction. He had put his feelings out there in the only way he knew how, and it was all coming to a head. In a situation like this, I had to be firm yet considerate. I could never live with myself if I trampled over his heart, even if I didn't mean to. I thought for sure you'd like it. I guess I was wrong. He kicked at the dirt, still unwilling to meet my gaze. Wow. As if I didn't feel guilty enough already. What are you talking about? This is an awesome gift. Thank you. As soon as I said that, his toothy smile came roaring back with a vengeance. But from now on, you can't give me any more presents. Why not? In one fell swoop, he turned my words against me. Poor boy was on the verge of tears. His voice quivered as he explained his intent. He had seen how delighted I was with Vasaraga's gift of sandwiches, and all he wanted was to deliver that same joy. Oh, you sweet darling boy. You've got a lot to learn, but your heart's in the right place. I'd hate to leave you jaded. I decided that honesty was the best course of action. No more tiptoeing around the issue. It's a lovely gift, but I'm worried you're not eating enough to grow big and strong. That's why I want you to spend your money on snacks for yourself, okay? Okay, got it. Way to go, Zeta. So much for being up front with him. I'm glad you understand. Now why don't we dig into this yummy treat together? Sure. I'd be happy to feed you. Gah. Why, you conniving little... My hands work just fine, thank you very much. Oh, fooey. From now on, I'm gonna prove that we're meant for each other. The talk I had with Vaughn yesterday only intensified his resolve. I asked him what he had in mind. First, I'll get to know you better, Zeta. A little late for that, but at least he was thinking in the right direction. Let me see. Okay, first question. What's your type of guy? Subtlety wasn't Vaughn's strongest point. How to be compatible with your partner is something you should figure out for yourself. Huh? But I don't know how to do that. It's faster just to ask. Hmm. This kid... Hmm. Do you like strong guys? You could say that. I prefer someone who knows how to fend for themselves. It means I don't have to worry about them as much. Well, that's perfect then. Vaughn stood up straight and tall and proudly puffed out his chest. I'm still in the middle of sword training, but I'm the best out of all the kids in the class. Even the bigger ones. Already outclassing the older kids, huh? Not bad, not bad. I wonder how I stacked up when I was his age. Now do you love me? Not even close. Fooey. His reactions cracked me up. There was never a dull moment with this kid. Uh, there has to be a way for me to win your heart. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that was just too precious. I didn't mean to laugh, but his frustration caught me off guard. He was trying so hard against the odds to win me over. If we were around the same age, things might have been different. I don't care about being precious. I care about you. The more he sulked, the harder it became to hold in my giggles. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I patted his head in an attempt to lighten the mood, but he wasn't having it. <laughs> Bahamut saved me. His kid was so sweet he was going to give me cavities.
The air in Seed Hollow that morning was electric. I hadn't felt that amped up in a good while. Time to get this show on the road. Roger that. Vasaraga had met up with me right on schedule. I sucked in a lungful of the morning chill to calm my nerves. Good morning, Zeta. Good morning, Vasaraga. Morning. You're up awfully early today. Where are you guys going? He must have sensed something big was in the works. The concern in his voice was clear as day. A couple of rough customers challenged us to a serious fight. I want to come too! Can I please? It wasn't like him to try to tag along. He knew better than that. No can do, little man. This isn't a game. But... but I've been practicing my sword swings every day! I can help you beat them! Of all the days he could have picked to be fussy, why did it have to be today? Sparring and actual combat are worlds apart. Pride goeth before destruction. It was obvious from the frown on Vaughn's face that he wasn't going to take no for an answer. I need you to be good and listen to us, all right? We left Vaughn behind and made a beeline for Seed Hollow Castle. We stepped into its great hall, where Magliel and her sword veil were already waiting. Allow me to extend my utmost gratitude for taking the time to indulge my invitation. Ugh, can the formalities. I came here to throw down, not listen to boring speeches. I didn't think the castle would be okay with us doing battle within its walls. Well, no one else was using the hall. Let's just say those who helped with the castle's restoration are afforded special privileges. This woman, for all her pomp and circumstance, was no joke of a warrior. I was curious as to whether your weapons are deserving of their legend. My fellowship prides itself with collecting only the most prized armaments. Ha! I knew there had to be more to this call-out. I'll get straight to the point. We are interested in purchasing your seal weapons. Allow me to appraise their performance during our little skirmish. In other words, she was making us an offer we couldn't refuse. Even though this isn't a fight to the death, don't come crying to me when you get your asses handed to you. Magliel didn't respond. She simply smirked and an arsenal of magic swords materialized around her. I tightened my grip on our vest and took a deep breath. I thought back to all the times Vasaraga and I had cheated death. It made me feel invincible. This victory belonged to us. Let's do this, Seda. Hell yeah! The words were barely out of my mouth before I was leaping into the fray. Oh, no. I could have held out a bit longer. Oh, shit. No, 
Camilla, you put up a good time. I'm down to spar again any time. Stop me. Infinite wonder! Rain of fury! for exhibiting the beauty of Arves and Grinna. You're not so bad yourself. Most people would have lost to us by now. Yep. Mission complete. You better have a good reason for sneaking in here, little man. I didn't want you getting hurt. That's all. Oh, why didn't you stay put like I told you to? I said this wasn't a game. There's no excuse for being a distraction on the battlefield. Every swordsman knows that, even rookies. Vaughn fell silent, realizing he couldn't argue back. He just stood there with his head hanging down. Crap, was I too hard on him? But here's the thing about warfare. If you're all valor and no discretion, you're gonna end up in a coffin real fast. I messed up. I'm sorry. Vaughn looked so miserable. It was like watching a kid choke down bitter medicine. Oh, what could I say to soften the blow? You made a mistake, but your intentions were true. It takes courage to own up to one's error and apologize. Vasaraga gently clapped the boy on the shoulder with his rugged mitt. Vaughn quickly perked up after that. Vasaraga's like a giant teddy bear when it comes to kids. I can count on him to smooth things over when I get too preachy. No arguments there. Oh well. What's done is done. Me chewing you out isn't gonna change the past. Thanks, Vasaraga. I needed that save. Hold on, Zeta. Don't move. He reached up and applied a cool, damp salve onto my right cheek. I wasn't lying when I said I was worried about you. See? You did get injured. Hey, even the pros get banged up every now and then. It's not really an injury, per se. More like a scratch. I'm amazed you even spotted it. Just so you know, this medicine was made from the ingredients you collected. The hospital director was really happy for your help. Sheesh. When was the last time someone coddled me this much over a tiny cut? I had to admit it felt nice. Thank you, Vaughn. I think we're about done here. Come on, Vaughn. I'll take you home. If I didn't know any better, I'd say Vaughn had taken a shine to the big guy. It wasn't hard to see why, given the way Vasaraga treated him with kid gloves and all. You have my thanks for giving me a taste of Arves and Grinoth. You both handled those weapons with skill and finesse. Damn right we did. You didn't even make us break a sweat. <laughs> Is that so? I got the sense that this weapons nut wasn't actually invested in the fight itself. She just wanted an excuse to research Arves. Maybe to brag about her own collection. Kind of funny how just talking about tools of destruction sends her into a frenzy. Then again, I get hyped about testing my combat skills, so who am I to judge? By the way, I think we deserve a bit of compensation for our troubles. Oh dear, how silly of me. You're right. I must pay the price for losing the challenge. I suppose I could bid farewell to my precious, beloved Guyborg. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't make me out to be the bad guy. How about this? Why don't you treat me to the tastiest dessert this Skydom has to offer? 
Magliel's frown vanished in the blink of an eye, and her tears dried up like magic, though I'm not even sure she was crying in the first place. Why, it would be my pleasure. Did you know there is a hidden gem of a bistro that serves pancakes topped with rare fruits right here in Seed Hollow? Shut up! What kind of rare fruits are we talking about? She was literally bouncing with excitement. Cultivated by only the greenest of green thumbs, each luxurious piece of nature's candy is a crowning achievement of sweetness. The cream of the crop. You simply must taste it to believe the capital's best-kept secret. Huh. So you do have other hobbies outside of weapon collecting. Alrighty, you're on. I'll be in touch about dates and stuff. As I left the castle hall behind, I saw that Vasaraga and Vaughn hadn't gotten much of a head start on me. I ran to catch up to them, all the while wondering, does Vasaraga like pancakes? And as strange as it sounds, out of all the missions I'd wrapped up lately, I hadn't felt a greater sense of accomplishment than in that moment. After the showdown with Magliel, it was a while before I saw Vaughn again. Hey, little man. I was wondering when you were gonna pop in. How you holding up these days? His hair had grown out a bit since we last talked. I had no idea that much time had already passed. He seemed downcast, as if he had something heavy on his mind. Maybe I could get him to open up about it. Is there something you want to get off your chest? Yeah, how should I put this? I, uh, I like you, Zeta. He was trying to keep his embarrassment at bay, but the way he fumbled his words betrayed his emotions. Thanks. Is that all you wanted to tell me? No, there's more. I'm gonna get stronger. As strong as you and Vasaraga. He had a deadly serious look in his eye. Kid must have thought long and hard about this. Is that so? Here was a side of Vaughn I had never seen before. More earnest. More mature. I felt a swell of pride as a smile crossed my face. Yup. That's why I'm calling off all marriage proposals for now. Oh? Why the sudden 180? <sighs> I just think it'd be better for us to stop seeing each other for a while. Huh. It's going to be tough on me, too. But I think we both need time apart. I did not see this coming. No, uh-uh. Don't talk like that. I refuse to let anyone get the wrong idea about us. But I can't marry you yet. There wasn't going to be a wedding anyway. My point is you and I were never. I'm sorry, Zeta. It's not you. It's me. Ugh, stop! Don't even think about saying another word. <laughs> Ugh. He wasn't listening to me anymore. He'd already written his own head cannon. But you know what? It was sort of nice to be doted on. For what it's worth, I like to think I taught him a few life lessons, too. I'd forgotten what it was like to view the world through the innocent eyes of a child. Hanging out with Vaughn took me back to a simpler time. Hmm. Thanks for jogging my memory, little man. Funny thing is, dwelling on the past isn't my style. Not at all. Living in the now is my ammo. But one thing's for sure. I'll never forget the time I spent with Vaughn. Dear Zeta, I'm doing well. How about you? Thanks to all the hours I put into sword practice, the dojo accepted me as a disciple. I'm on my way to becoming a man worthy of your hand. I'm sorry you have to wait, but someday I'll take the stone you gave me to Fulka and have it made into a ring. Take care of yourself. Sincerely, 
fun. P.S. I don't mind if you see other people if it's just a fling. <laughs> you cheeky little brat. You just keep doing your thing, Vaughn. It's funny how you don't miss someone until they're gone. Regardless, I was happy to hear that Vaughn was doing well for himself. It's okay to see other people, huh? <laughs> That's a good one. Ah, oh, it's such a nice day today. The breeze was subtle, and there wasn't a cloud in the sky. Just as I was beginning to take in the morning calm, a lone figure appeared on the deck of the Grand Cipher. Greetings, Ada. Are you ready for the best pancakes of your life? You better believe I was ready. Nothing gets between me and my dessert. Now let's just say when I arrive in Seed Hollow, and a certain lovelorn puppy dog comes sprinting over to propose to me, my answer to him would be... In your dreams, little man. Today is my first day off in forever, and I'm gonna party it up.